Are you ready to kickstart your week with some dirt sling and tire slaying action motorsports radio that packs the biggest guests? Hi, Ken Block here. Hey, my name's Jolene Van Butte. What's up, Brian Deegan? Vaughn Gittin Jr. here. They've been thrown into one show that has broken down the barriers of what a motorsports radio show should be. This is the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor, with support from General Tire, KMC Wheels, Dirtfish, Gibson Exhaust, and MTX Audio, with your host, who also happens to spend his weekends flying 800 horsepower trucks through the dirt, Jim Beaver. When was the last time you saw an off-road or rally driver begging to get behind the wheel of a NASCAR Indy car? Yep, not happening, but you sure see these pavement racers begging to drive our cars. And his partner in crime every week, a self-proclaimed Canadian moto chick who was jumping triples and taking podiums before most guys even learned to ride. Amy Hood. No one knows how to say my last name. Like, is it really that hard? Amy Hood, like I'm from the hood. Don't get it twisted. Sit back, strap in, and be prepared to join us as we take you through a motorsports ride like no other. Here is the man who carries a steering wheel in one hand and a mic in the other, Jim Beaver. Good morning and welcome to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. And I'm just going to go out there and throw it out there, but we're going to call this the General Tire Edition today. i uh, got a couple of great General Tire guests and uh, some absolutely phenomenal guests today. Uh, but kicking things off, we got uh, a good friend of mine, Ashley Wilkie, General Tire uh, model slash kind of brand ambassador, also works with Monster Energy and Traxxas. Uh, going to be great to uh, catch up with Ashley. Man, this girl takes in probably more motorsports events a year than I do, and that's uh, definitely saying something. And then we got 2016 Lucas Oil Pro Light Champ Jarrett Brooks doing it up on General Tire Grabber X3s, taking on the championship and the cup win this past weekend out in Phoenix. He's going to be calling in. We're going to be talking all things short course General Tires with my buddy Jarrett. And then hour number two. We've got a couple of segments blocked off. The legend, one of the greatest of all time to ever drive an off-road truck, Lightning Larry Raglan on the show. First time ever in five years. He's going into the Off-Road Motorsports Hall of Fame. He is going to be on the show in hour number two. This is one I've waited a long time to do. Super stoked for this interview. It's going to be epic. Pumped on that. It's going to be a great show today. Hang tight. We've got a commercial break coming at you. And uh, we got a lot to talk about here today on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Hey, I'm RJ Anderson, factory Polaris driver, and I drive Polaris because it's the most capable, race-ready off-road vehicle on the market. When RJ Anderson wanted to set a world record for the longest UTV jump in history, not once but twice, what company did he trust? Polaris and their championship-winning Razor XP1000. RJ is a UTV champion behind the wheel of Polaris vehicles, and he exclusively trusts the Polaris Razors to bring him race wins and championships against some of the toughest off-road racers in the world. The same Polaris Razors RJ has won championships in, set world records in, and conquered the wall of death in XP1K2 are available to you at your local Polaris dealer. Take the advice of world record holder R.J. Anderson and visit Polaris on the web at Polaris.com to see the full lineup of Polaris Razor vehicles or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. For 100 years, General Tire has provided tires for your lifestyle, your adventure, your anywhere. Born from competition, the Grabber Tire offers the durability and off-road traction you demand in a tire. We put these tires to the test in the harshest off-road racing conditions to give you a tire that will make your anywhere possible. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us photos at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible. Because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, a 268-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine, rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race-ready 305-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, it's not a sibling rivalry, it's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. 
Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for 15% discount. MTX Audio is the leader in sound. Whether you're looking for high-quality all-weather motorsports audio products like sound bars, amplifiers, and speakers that will work on any UTV or motorcycle, need to dial in your car home with high-performance audio solutions, or are looking for a new portable speaker or set of headphones, MTX Audio has what you need to get your project sounding as good as it looks. MTX Audio is a family-owned American manufacturer who has been in business for over 40 years. Check out the full line of products at MTX.com. Welcome back to your favorite uh, radio show here, the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Jim Beaver here, flying solo. My partner in crime, Amy Hood, is off uh, being Amy Hood. I guess that's the easiest way to put it. But uh, no, it's all planned. We had her last week. She's going to pop in from time to time. I think she's off this week, next week. Like I said, we got these big, massive plans we're working on. And uh, she's just uh, she's out doing that, and uh, rightfully so. When you guys find out, you'll totally understand why. I know we've been teasing this for, what, like three, four months now because she's been literally off the grid on the show that much. But uh, it is what it is, man. Uh, stoked to have her when we can. But uh, she'll be back full-time this fall and winter, I promise you guys. It's just uh, – just uh, we got some good things going on, so let's uh, let's just leave it at that. Speaking of good things, this is uh, the Down and Dirty Radio Show General Tire Edition. As we'll get to some of our guests uh, in the upcoming segments, uh, but uh, want to thank all of you. Uh, my new podcast, Jim Beaver's Project Action, over there with Podcast One. Uh, you guys have been uh, killing it with the downloads. We're one of the top ranked sports podcasts on all of iTunes. Uh, we're working at getting that. Uh, that uh, exclusive uh, new and noteworthy spot. And uh, you guys have been tremendous uh, in helping us uh, to get there. We're not there yet, uh, but the only way we're going to get there is if you guys continue to subscribe on iTunes and, uh, and even more importantly, rate and review. So go to iTunes, Project Action, subscribe, and then rate and review that's the important part, as well as the subscription. And uh, let us know, uh, you know, if you like what we're doing, give me five stars, give me one star. I don't care. I'm never going to tell you how to uh, rate me, uh, but uh, just rate me one way or another. I'd appreciate it. Definitely does help. And uh, you can always, uh, if you're not an iTunes user, download that Podcast One app to your uh, phone or tablet or uh, go over to Podcast One's website and uh, just hit up uh, Project Action. You can stream them all there, as well as uh, on the Down and Dirty Radio Show's website. Had some epic guests so far. I mean, Ken Block, Jason Ellis. I had Street Bike Tommy recently. We did an amazing interview with Sarah Price, skateboarder Sean Malto. Um, yeah, and we're really diving in deep. Uh, Amy Hood and I did uh, an episode together. We're going to do that from time to time. But uh, lots of good stuff. Appreciate all of you uh, taking the time to uh, listen in, rate, review, subscribe, all the kind words, man. It's been it's been awesome. It truly, truly has to get your feedback. You never know. I've been doing Down and Dirty Radio Show for five years now, almost five years, fifth year anniversary coming up in December. Um, but uh, you never know. You start a spinoff project, how the reception is going to be. And i got to say, man, the reception has been top notch from you guys. And, uh, uh, you know, the listener community we've built, uh, whether it be online or now in national syndication and on social media, um, you know, and on the web and uh, the feedback I get from you guys is just, uh, man, it, it really uh, helps keep me going. So uh, I appreciate all of that. Um, man, and <laughs> this weekend we had a ton of motorsports going on. And then uh, I got to say, I, I mean, obviously I'm an Arizona Cardinals fan. You guys know that. I don't know those of you that tuned into uh, Sunday Night Football, but man, oh, man. Uh, I think the Cardinals are uh, definitely looking for a new kicker at this point in time, but uh, we're not going to get dive too much into football, but uh, if you guys were tuned into Sunday night football, my gosh, uh, how do you end in a tie game in football? I mean, seriously, just keep playing until somebody wins. It's crazy. Tie. That just doesn't sit well with me in sports. You can't have a tie. 
be like you know, be like the Indy 500 or the Baja 1000 and having a tie. You find out a way to create a winner. Like you don't have ties in motorsports and sports. It just it doesn't work. Um, you know, even in golf, they have you know playoffs, and you just like you just play it out until somebody scores a, a touchdown or something. I mean, a tie. That's just that's horrible. That's like I don't know. Even the teams afterwards, like, what do, what do we do with this? Are we supposed to celebrate? Are we supposed to be pissed off? I think both of them ought to be pissed off because they both shanked easy kicks. But uh, here we go getting into some football talk. But seriously, ties, it doesn't work. Um, you know, it just does not work. Could you imagine this past weekend at uh, the Lucas Oil, you know, cup race, $30,000 on the line, and uh, Kyle Duke and R.J. Anderson tied? What would you do? Split the thirty grand in half and say, "Oh, you're both Cup winners." Like it just ties don't work in sports. Figured out football. I'm sorry. Um, you know we're getting on a rant here, but uh, it's the truth. Can't handle that. And then to top things off, we had Walking Dead, the debut of that, one of my favorite shows on TV. And uh, all I was was pissed off the whole show. I don't know, man. Uh, and this is something I guess for the podcast. But seriously, if you're a Walking Dead fan uh, and you like that episode, like seriously, I just I don't know. I was pissed off. Like you wait all. You wait all all summer long, and uh, that is what we get? Like, I don't know. Just piss me off, man. Um, somebody kill that guy already. But <laughs> here we go. Uh, talk of Walking Dead and football to start a motorsports show. So my rants are over for the day. We're going we're gonna to go full-blown into some uh, motorsports talk with some horsepower. No more Walking Dead. No more Arizona Cardinals. Uh, so I promise. So I, I got that all out of my system the first 10 minutes of the show and, uh, we're, we're done. We're moving on to motorsports. Finally, that's what you guys want. And, uh, that's what you're going to get. And uh, I got to say camp razor coming up this weekend. And uh, I am, gosh, man, this next two weeks are busy for me. They got to be busy for everybody in motorsports, uh, especially guys like me who, uh, you know, represent uh, just a phenomenal company in that uh, Polaris Razor. But uh, I get to go out to Glamis. Uh, I just found out I am going to get to drive one of the new 2017 XP Turbos. Polaris Razor going to let me loose out in the sand dunes at Glamis in a brand new 168 horsepower Razor. And, uh, can you tell I'm pumped? I am so pumped on this. Um, uh, you know, ever since I heard about this and they had the launch and everything else, I seriously, I've been chomping at the bit to uh, get my hands on one. It happens this weekend and I am amped for it. So I can promise you next week, be prepared. Uh, we're going <laughs> to, we're going to be talking about uh, Polaris razors and then camp razor, all the fun, all the shenanigans out there. Actually, you know, we, we do some cool stuff. We're going to have a lot of content, do a lot of interviews, uh, with a lot of the guys behind Polaris Razor. I know Twitch is going to be out there. Um, man, just a list of guys. Um, you know, obviously RJ Anderson, all the racers. Like, we're going we're to have some awesome interviews next week. And then SEMA week. Uh, you know, whether you're motorsports or just in the auto industry, like, SEMA is the week. You know, I got to go out to Vegas. Uh, my week's going to be shorter. I'm not staying the whole week this time. Just like a. I got a signing with Gibson Exhaust, though. So Thursday at 11 a.m. at the Gibson Exhaust booth of SEMA Week, I will be signing. So uh, come meet me. I would love to meet you fans. I will be signing some amazing posters with Gibson Exhaust. I understand I'm on it. Uh, Brian Deegan, maybe Haley Deegan. Uh, it's going to be an awesome poster. I'm going to be signing with Gibson Exhaust 11 a.m. Thursday, SEMA Come out, and uh, I'm sure we're going to be giving some stuff away. Gibson always has good swag to, to give away to uh, uh, to fans who stop by to get a poster, like lanyards and koozie cups, and they've got the good ones, not those crap ones. So uh, I'm just telling you, come by. We'll hook you up with all kinds of stuff, and i uh, love to meet all the listeners. But uh, that's 11 a.m. Um, Thursday of SEMA week. And uh, I got some meetings and stuff. I don't know. Maybe I'll see if I can sneak in and get a get another uh, ride with uh, Ryan Turk or Von Gittin Jr. out on the drift pad out front because uh, that is always a whole lot of fun. But, uh, man, I don't know. It's a busy couple of weeks. Throw in some more Terracross television voiceovers for me. And, uh, um, man, it's it's packed. I'm excited. I'd, I'd rather be doing that than sitting on my hands and throwing a couple of podcasts, some radio. And, uh, man, we got the makings of uh, an epic couple of weeks that's for sure. Um, man, just uh, just excited. Very blessed. That's uh, that's definitely, definitely for sure. But uh, 
Uh, I don't know. Uh, you know, we got uh, some amazing guests coming up. Jarrett Brooks uh, winning on the new Gentle Tire X- Grabber X3s. I really want to talk to him about these new X3s, man, because it was like he was shot out of a cannon this year once he got those tires on that truck. Ashley Wilkie uh, and then Lightning Larry Raglan. If you guys have any questions for any of these guests, I know we're going to start rolling in with the questions for Larry Raglan. Tweet me at Jim Beaver 15. Uh, I'm not watching any of my other social media accounts when we're live on the air, just Twitter. So at Jim Beaver 15. And, uh, you know, we will definitely get those questions asked for either Jared, Ashley, Larry Raglan, or if you just got something for me, we'll definitely, uh, definitely get those in the show. Uh, that's for sure. But we're going to take a short commercial break. We come back. Ashley Wilkie, she's going to be on the line. We're going to be talking uh, gentle tire, Traxxas, Monster Energy, and a whole lot more here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. I'm Polaris rider Jim Beaver. I race trophy trucks professionally, host a Down and Dirty Radio Show, and also travel the country announcing motorsports events. I've seen it all, and trust me, I've done most of it. So when it comes time to relax on the weekend, nothing is better than taking time with my family in our Razor vehicles. They've got the reliability I need to just pick up and go explore the desert dunes or trail and have the capability to attack even the harshest terrain. If you're looking for some of the most reliable and safest and hands-down most capable off-road machines in the world, look no further than Polaris and their award-winning lineup of Razor vehicles. Whether you want your daughter to experience off-road driving for the first time in a Razor 170 like me, take the entire family out in a Razor XP4 1000 on the weekend, or shred the desert and dunes in the all-new Razor XP1000 Fox Edition, Polaris has you handled. Take my advice and join me and some of the best drivers in the world by driving a Polaris Razor. Check out the full Polaris Razor lineup at Polaris.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris. Polaris Razor. Are you looking for a place to push yourself behind the wheel and see how your driving skills stack up? Dirtfish Rally School is that place. Located on 315 acres of pristine automotive playground at the foot of the Cascade Mountains in Snoqualmie, Washington, right outside of Seattle, Dirtfish Rally School is a -a one-of-a-kind place where everyone from first-time drivers to seasoned professionals like Bucky Lassick and Antoine Lestage can push themselves to their limit. Whether driving the high-performance, rally-prepped, all-wheel drive Subaru Impreza STI is what you're looking for, or you'd rather hang it all out in the rear-wheel drive Subaru BR Z's, Dirtfish Rally School has something for everyone. Classes are available from two hours to three full days and feature instructors with over 150 years of combined racing experience. Whether you're looking to become the best and get an edge on the competition or just looking to freshen your skills behind the wheel, Dirtfish Rally School is the place to go. For more information on registering for classes, visit Dirtfish on the web at dirtfish.com or to check out the latest happenings from Dirtfish, follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Dirtfish Rally. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, a 268-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine, rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race-ready 305-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, it's not a sibling rivalry, it's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. Your life demands a tire that provides durability, comfort, and performance, and that's what General Tire delivers for you. From the all-season grip of the Grabber UHP to the comfort and on-road manners of the Grabber HTS to the durability and off-road traction of the Grabber AT2, General has a tire that will help get you where you need to go. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible, because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor, General Tire Edition, as we're calling it. Uh, I'd like to welcome my next guest to the line, my friend Ashley Wilkie, General Tire, Traxxas, Monster Energy. I don't know, am I missing anything, Ashley? <laughs> no, I think that about sums it up. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, well, you had a fun weekend out there. It's always a good time when you get to go on the podium with Mr. Jarrett Brooks, isn't it? That's right. It was so much fun, but oh my God, it was so hot. I couldn't get over the heat. <laughs> yeah, it's been crazy. I mean, I'm an Arizona boy, so I'm a, a bit used to it, I guess, but uh, it's been a warm October and I can only imagine it, out there. It's yeah, it had been cooking. Yeah, it, it was. I was melting, but it was a good time. Always a good time with General Tire. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it was uh, definitely a good season for Jarrett. Um, 
man, uh, walking away with, uh, you know, yet another victory. I mean, it's just uh, kind of crazy. But, uh, man, uh, you know, you, I mean, you've got to be one of uh, – you know, I, I've got a lot of friends that, uh, you know, are kind of models and brand ambassadors and, and things like that. But uh, i got to say, you got a pretty good gig. I mean, you know, the three, <laughs> brand, the three brands you represent put you pretty much all over the country at events. It's pretty uh, pretty lucky. Oh, my gosh, yeah. I am so blessed. I, every weekend I'm at some different form of motorsports event, and I, I just I couldn't be more excited and blessed. I love it. It's so much fun being able to travel and just represent such great brands. Yeah. So were you out at, uh, I, I didn't see, were you out at Monster Energy Cup uh, a week or so ago? I was. Nice. I sure was. Yep. Nice. How was that? I haven't been, that's one event I haven't been to in person yet. I mean, I've been to Supercross races, but Monster Energy Cup is like, I don't know, it's like you take a regular Supercross race and then amp, you know, ramp it up a couple of notches. Oh yeah. There's so much hype around it. And it was, yeah, it was crazy. It was so much fun. We were there for a few days beforehand, just filming and yeah, it was it was nuts. The, the fans go crazy, and they even let me do some some fire pyrotechnic pyrotechnic is that the word? Yeah. Some flame throwing, basically. So I got to do that on the track. Flame so throwing, another how did, level. <laughs> how did that work out? Yeah, it was pretty good, surprisingly. So you know, now I can add that to my resume that I'm an official flame thrower for Monster Energy Cup. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Flamethrower. I guess you've probably done the T-shirt rockets before too, right? Yep. Yep. So now you just yeah. Need, now you just need to combine the two and start shooting flaming T-shirts, and uh, then you you can add another thing to your resume, right? Yeah. We'll just hope <laughs> for the best. Hope no one catches on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. Um, so I, I got to ask, so I know, um, we're going to circle back and we got, we got a lot to talk about in this segment, but, uh, I was looking back. So tell me about Rob Gronkowski. Now I know monster energy signed him to a deal. So you got out of all the monster energy girls, you got pegged to do this, to do this kind of rollout with uh, Rob Gronkowski. How did that work out? Yeah, that was so much fun. Gosh, when was that? That was probably last spring already that he officially, teamed up with Monster Energy and launched his own can. So it's called Gronk. And myself and another Monster Girl and model, Betsy Mitchison, um, we got to shoot the ad campaign with him. And it's so, so cool. But basically the reason why we got to do it is because we were two of the shortest girls. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the ad campaign was basically to show, you know, how large and you know, just larger than life his personality is and just also how tall he is. He's six six and we're only five five. So that's the the one rare occasion when being short in the modeling industry came in handy. That's funny you mentioned that because I wouldn't have thought about that, but I've got uh uh another friend of mine that's a model. She uh um she also works with Monster Energy a bit, but she actually mm -hmm. had to kind of fudge on her height because she's so short and it was like, she, you know, you she, have to, unfortunately, <laughs> she's like, you know, and, and they love her now and they know her real height, but it was like, originally mm -hmm. it was like, Oh, we're going to fudge this an inch or two. And, uh, you know, just yeah, to, exactly. kind of get in the door, you know, it's, uh, just, you know, fluff up the hair, put on some heels and you're a whole, a whole few inches taller. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. <laughs> well, I got to ask you, um, how, you know, it seems like now with the modeling and things like that, how does social media come into play with you guys? Because it seems like now, I mean, do companies, you know, before they sign somebody, do they really look at like Instagram followers and go, oh man, she's got a hundred thousand. Ah, she's only got 10,000. Like, I mean, does it cost you jobs or does it uh, get you jobs? I mean, the better you're falling. Cause it seems like a lot of models, I mean, everybody's investing in social media. I mean, mm -hmm. I know my, yeah. my sponsors look at it and, you know, and a lot of my contracts hinge on that. But I mean, with you guys, it seems like it's even more so. It is. It's crazy. It just even within the past six months, I would say, going to different castings and, and stuff like that, it's definitely a question. And it's on that form, you know, how many Instagram followers do you have? Because they're looking at it as obviously they're going to get, you know, you to hopefully promote them not only via the campaign, but also on your Instagram. So it's, it's brutal. I've had um, a few different castings now where I got turned down because I didn't have the, you know, the higher amount of followers that they were wanting. So it seems like now the magic number is 100,000 followers seems to be the new thing. So I think I'm around 40. So I've got to got to work to get towards it. But it makes it hard. It really does. Because that's now a whole new element that you have to worry about. Yeah, well, it's got to be frustrating, too. Because I, I mean, at some point, you know, and you know, talent, 
doesn't quite matter as much. It's it's all based on that, that mm-hmm. magic number. You know, it doesn't matter what you've done in the past or, or how you know successful you've been. If you don't have that magic number, then you know you're losing jobs. It's going to be kind of frustrating. Yeah, it does. It does get frustrating, but you know, hopefully, in the end, they to to some extent, hopefully, are focused a little bit more on your talent and your experience. But I mean, I get it. It's all you know. It's all marketing, so I get it. It's it's whatever, you know, who, who can promote you the most. I, I understand. It's just, yeah, it's a cruel world, unfortunately, that I'm in. But it's, it's still fun. Yeah, for sure. So on a brighter note, you've got to take in a ton of motorsports this year. Uh, you know, not only yes. General Tire, but Monster and then Traxxas. I know uh, Taylor, a good friend of mine over there at uh, Traxxas. Mm-hmm. I know, uh, you know, you know her well. But, uh, I mean, take yeah. us through some of the, the stuff. I mean, with General Tire and Traxxas, I mean, you've had to have been all over the country. I mean, what's some of the highlights of the year for you? <laughs> oh, man. Highlights of the year. Well, for Traxxas, I do the NHRA, so the drag racing, and then the um, – all of Robbie Gordon's events. So that's really fun. One of the highlights for sure with Traxxas was going to Toronto just because I've never been to any part of Canada. And that was so much fun. And yeah, Taylor's a blast. So just anytime you get to hang out with her makes it fun. Um, Gosh, with Monster, definitely any, really any of the Supercross events. I think that has some of the, the most intense and enthusiastic fan base and it's just really cool to be a part of that and get in that energy and you know people will remember you from a past event that you worked and and then with general tire i mean the same thing is a great following our having jared on our team was crazy it added a whole new element of just excitement so it's been crazy i mean traveling it's just it's it's a whirlwind sometimes you can't remember where you were last weekend but it's it's so much fun and just crazy how many different places I get to go. I'm very, very lucky. Yeah. Well, you mentioned NHRA. I had the opportunity way back in, uh, I think it was May, April, May. I sat down with uh, Courtney and Graham and did. Uh, got the opportunity mm-hmm. to do a, like a 45-minute interview with them just talking about life and stuff like that. But Courtney in particular, man, she just seems like a super genuine person. Like, I mean, it was just, I mean, she's so just a sweetheart. It was pretty amazing, really. You know, it, you know, it just, it, she just seems like a quality, quality person. Oh, yeah, both both her and her sister and her dad, obviously, John Force, they are some of the coolest down-to-earth people, and the way they interact with their fans is just awesome. I mean, they go the extra mile if someone's been standing in line, and they maybe that line, you know, gets cut for autograph signing, but they, they really want that autograph. They'll go that extra mile and wait that, you know, that couple extra minutes to sign autographs, and they're, yeah, super, super cool down-to-earth people, which is really cool with as much success as they've had just to to stay humble and just so grateful for their fans is awesome. Yeah. Well, I got to ask you, you know, obviously you've been doing a bunch of uh, off-road stuff, whether it be with Traxxas or with General Tire, Mm -hmm. you've been out at Lucas Short Course and you were out at Vegas Torino. Uh, So have you had the opportunity to go on a ride along with anybody yet and jump in one of these off-road trucks? Seriously? (laughs) No, I haven't. Oh my gosh. I've been working. I know. No one's given me that opportunity quite yet, but we got to make that. We'll make change. it happen, I think. Yeah, yeah. even if, like I, I got, we got so many race cars sitting around the shop and razors and stuff. Like, <laughs> like we'll, we'll get you in something. Like this has got to happen. Like, I can't, yeah. I can't believe even a stadium super trucks or anything. Like nobody's throwing you in for a ride along. That's crazy. We're no, we're no. all failing. You at know, this. maybe they just they know I have all this secret potential, so they're yeah. they're nervous. They don't want to they don't want to risk it. I could be the next big thing. You never know. Ah, I see, yes, I see. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> you got to steal their job. Yeah, you better. Just, I could. I could. Yeah, General Tire, if you're listening, I don't know. I think you need to move her from, uh, you know, being out front to <laughs> being behind the wheel. I, I don't know. Behind you, the wheel. You know, if me and Jarrett, we'll, we'll switch maybe next season. He can do the podium stuff, and I'll just get behind the wheel. I mean, it could work out. Well, I've heard rumors maybe he's going to Pro 2, so that leaves a pro light open. I think Ashley could slide behind That's the true. wheel. There. That's true. Yeah. It could be. It could be that time. Yeah, he's coming up in the next segment you know i'm gonna ask him too <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure he'll love that idea <laughs> yeah oh too funny uh well before we let you go you got to give us uh give us the details where can people uh find out more information on you and uh give you a follow and uh, all that good stuff yeah absolutely definitely on instagram as we discussed let's boost that following of mine it's at ash wilkie xo uh, Twitter, I love interacting on Twitter. It's at Ash Wilkie. And then my website is AshleyWilkie.com. Nice. 
Well, I appreciate you taking the time, Ashley. I'm sure uh, you're going to be out at SEMA? I will. I'll be with Continental Tire, so make sure you stop by and say hi. Sweet. I was just on some emails this morning. I will be out there, so I will definitely swing by and say hey. Perfect. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Ashley. And, uh, you know, let's, uh, let's hope you can uh, grow those Instagram followers a bit and make, <laughs> get that magic number of 100,000. We'll get there. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks a lot, Ashley. All right. Thanks. Uh -huh. Bye. Bye. All right. That was uh, Ashley Wilkie, uh, General Tire uh, kind of a brand ambassador. And then you've got uh, – she also works with Traxxas and uh, Monster Energy. I got to meet her out at a couple of events uh, with General Tire this year, uh, you know, um, Obviously, uh, you know, I'm racing, and she's kind of out there out front. Uh, fans love her, and, uh, yeah, she's got a bit of a radio background as well. So uh, uh, stoked to have her on. Definitely give her a follow on social media. We're going to take a short commercial break. We come back, pro light champ Jarrett Brooks. He's going to be on the line here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Hey, I'm RJ Anderson, factory Polaris driver, and I drive Polaris because it's the most capable race-ready off-road vehicle on the market. When R.J. Anderson wanted to set a world record for the longest UTV jump in history, not once but twice, what company did he trust? Polaris and their championship-winning Razor XP1000. R.J. is a UTV champion behind the wheel of Polaris vehicles, and he exclusively trusts the Polaris Razors to bring him race wins and championships against some of the toughest off-road racers in the world. The same Polaris Razors RJ has won championships in, set world records in, and conquered the wall of death in XP1K2 are available to you at your local Polaris dealer. Take the advice of world record holder RJ Anderson and visit Polaris on the web at Polaris.com to see the full lineup of Polaris Razor vehicles or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. For 100 years, General Tire has provided tires for your lifestyle, your adventure, your anywhere. Born from competition, the Grabber Tire offers the durability and off-road traction you demand in a tire. We put these tires to the test in the harshest off-road racing conditions to give you a tire that will make your anywhere possible. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us photos at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible. Because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. Life is all about sound, the sound of sports, the sound of the racetrack, and the sound of your vehicle. Don't drive around listening to this. Drive around listening to the sound of performance. Gibson Performance. Gibson Performance Exhaust is the company who can turn this into this. Remember that life is all about sound, and Gibson Exhaust is the sound of performance. Check out your next catback exhaust system, headers, muffler, or UTV exhaust at GibsonPerformance.com and get more power and more sound. Since 1970, Casey Highlights has been designing and manufacturing performance lighting for off-road and motorsports. Beginning with the legendary Daylighter up until today's revolutionary Flex, Pod, and Pro 6 lighting systems, Casey Highlights offers a full line of halogen, HID, and LED lighting solutions for your off-road vehicle. Looking for the best quality lighting? Looking for the brand champions choose? You're looking for KC Highlights. Find out more information at kchighlights.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at KC highlights the subaru wrx and wrx sti a 268 horsepower turbocharged subaru boxer engine rockets the wrx around corners and down straightaways a race ready 305 horsepower turbocharged subaru boxer engine keeps the wrx sti a rally legend the subaru wrx and wrx sti it's not a sibling rivalry it's a tag team Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show powered by Polaris Razor. This is the General Tire Edition, brought to you by uh, our good friends at General Tire and the all-new Grabber X3. I'd like to welcome my next guest to the line, Jarrett Brooks, your 2016 Lucas Oil Pro Light champ. We've got a pretty good ring to it, doesn't it, Jarrett? Yeah, you know, uh, a, a solid season, kind of hard kind of hard to complain, and this is probably my best season I've had yet. So, you know, uh, it was kind of cool. We, we came in here, kind of, kind of the underdogs in a way. Um, you know, not done a job, so we got we got a new team, we got a new crew chief, uh 
first title sponsor of the year, uh, you know, new marketing guy. I mean, there's a there's a lot of new stuff coming this season that kind of plays a big part in the whole racing world. So it was kind of cool just to come out there and you know, kind of turn heads and prove everyone wrong. Yeah. Well, and you know, and it's funny you say that because you know. You know, you felt like you're the underdog. I mean, you know, and, and he, you're a guy who's carrying around a Torque Pro Light championship, you know, so obviously you know how to win championships, you, you know, but how was that transition moving from Torque to Lucas? Because, uh, you know, you said you're the underdog there, but, you you know, you're coming coming from Torque as a Pro Light champ. I mean, how was that transition for you? Um, Yeah, you know, I feel like when I went back to Torque, a lot of people were trying to bag on that, but, I mean, I feel like that was some of the most fun racing I've had, and it was honestly – super competitive i mean it i feel like it's more competitive than it than it is now because if you look at it i mean you got i was going against cj and keegan and you know they're both dominating in pro twos and pro fours and you know those are those are the top guys on the east coast and those are uh those are two pretty big families in the off-road industry yeah. and you know i battled with doug too so it was uh it was just as hard as the lucas championship is i don't think you'll really get that yeah, well, that's it. You mentioned Keegan and you mentioned uh, CJ, and anytime they do come out and run Lucas, you know, they're they're. It's not like they're back markers. They're immediately threats to take a win. You know, it's they they run that series, but they their skill level isn't like it's you know subpar or anything like that. Those guys are on point. Yeah, for sure. Especially like uh, when you go back to sport, you you can just learn so much, so much more setups, and the tracks are so much different. Where it, it it's almost like a big confidence booster racing back there and then and then coming to Lucas knowing knowing you can win. Yeah. Well that's a good point. I mean the tracks in, in Torque and Lucas are really different. I mean how how was that, you know, making that transition? Did you have to change your driving style at all to to adopt to uh to adapt to uh to Lucas or was it pretty seamless? Uh it was almost, it was pretty similar. I feel like uh those long tracks are actually a little tough to get to get down because the setup is is so key on that but i remember when i would go to the the short track you know i always had a big advantage just because uh just because all i've done is short track at lucas you know from the trophy cars and and my two seasons before i went back to tour at lucas um the short tracks helped me out a lot yeah well, you know, and, and talk about uh, championship this year. I mean, uh, you, you, you t- mentioned it was like this year was so different. New sponsors, everything behind the scenes for your team was new. I mean, what were the expectations going into 2016? I mean, walk away with a champ. I mean, Pro Light is is one of the most competitive fields in, in, in Lucas. I mean, it's just a stacked lineup. And, and it makes it even worse that if you don't qualify real well, I mean, you, you know, if you have to start in the back, it's like it's like hell making your way through traffic all the way to the front. I mean, it's such a tough a tough division to be racing. I mean, what were the expectations going into 2016? Yeah, coming into 2016, it was I had a I had big shoes to feel. So, um, you know, uh, Rigid came on for my first title sponsor this year, and that was kind of a big thing. Uh, so that's kind of what I've always dreamed for is having a title sponsor and, you know, what better way to do it with, uh, you know, my first year having one and won a championship and, you know, we, uh, general stepped up pretty big this year too. And, you know, we had their, uh, we had their new grab rack freeze on for the last few races and you know, those things were, uh, those things were awesome too. So, and then, uh, you know, we came out with Bill Stein too. And that was, that was a big, uh, that was a big head turn right there. Um, you know, a lot of guys turned those people down. It, it was kind of crazy, you know, uh, they were offering people chalks and, and money, and people turned it down just because they said, uh, you know, they're not good enough. We, we went out there, did our homework, tested them, and, you know, uh, my crew chief, John Hoffman, he's, he's a really good shock guy, and Doug over at Bill Stein is, is super savvy to a shock, and, you know, we uh, came out to the first race and, you know, uh, didn't really turn any heads, came out to the next race and, and swept that race, and that was kind of, uh, that was kind of our momentum right there. It was uh, kind of all went uphill from there, and we just – started going for it yeah it's funny you mentioned that about bilstein shocks i mean it, you know this company's been around for a long long time i mean uh you know they've kind of been out of the public eye i guess for a couple of years but doesn't mean their products you know any less it's kind of crazy you say like you know here they are offering sponsorships and people are just you know like literally just walking away from it that's crazy to me yeah yeah it's insane but um you know now i bet i bet a lot of people are going to jump on board um you know, it's cool to be uh, to be this year, especially me and Darren Hardesty Jr. You know, we both got championships on Bill signs this year, and, and you know, uh, you know I, I think I had probably had one of the best setup trucks this whole year, 
And, I mean, that all comes in a key. Yeah. Well, I got to ask the question, you know, that's sitting out there in everybody's minds. You know, here Jarrett Brooks is. is you, you won a uh, Torque Championship. Now you've won a Lucas Championship in Pro Light. Like, wh- what's the next step? I mean, uh, you know, do you have your sights set on Pro 2 or Pro 4? I mean, where do you go from here? Are we going to see you back in Pro Light? Or are we going to see a mix of uh, Pro 2 and Pro Light? I mean, where, where do we go from here? Yeah, yeah, we, uh, we'll be running full Pro 2 next year and, and full Pro Light, so we'll be doing double duty. Um, you know, I got my eyes set on Rob Hack, and, you know, you got RJ up there, you got Deacon, you got a lot of these, a lot of these big guys' names, and, um, you know, I think I can run with them. I, I've raced with Rob Mack in the Super Trucks. I, I raced RJ last year. I raced Deegan a few years ago, and, you know, we, we beat, we beat them all. So I feel like it will just be a, a big, a big learning curve for us. Um, you know, getting the truck set up, um, me getting comfortable in the thing, it's, it's for sure a lot different than my Pro Light, but, um, you know, I feel like it's making me better in my Pro Light, honestly. It's, ever since I got that Pro 2 and practiced in it, um, you know, I've, it's almost like almost like a confidence booster in my uh, in my pro light. Yeah, do you feel like you go from driving the pro two and then going to pro light? Do you feel like everything's moving so much slower in the pro light? It's like everything's in slow motion. No, not necessarily. I mean, the pro twos are, are obviously faster, but it's it's hard to get the it's hard to get traction in those things. You know, they're so heavy and and you have to almost let them do what they want to do. I mean, my pro light is so light and and nimble i can just put that thing wherever i want do whatever i want with it and my pro too i just kind of have to let it do what it wants to do so when i hop in my pro light i i i drive like my pro too in a way and it uh you know it just has a lot more traction it feels like in my pro too yeah well you know i just had before uh before you called in in the segment before we had ashley wilkie with uh with general tire and uh i know she's been on the podium with you uh quite a bit this year but she she was telling me she has yet to get in an off-road truck but she said you know jared if he's moving up to pro two she says that, that pro lights open she says i'll slide into the driver's seat she's like well we'll make things happen so I, i'm just telling you ashley's put it out there she's like i'll go from model to behind the steering wheel jared just needs to say go <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see that. I'll switch your place. I'll do the bottling for a little bit. That's, that's, that'll do. That's what she said. She's like, we just need to do a ride swap here. Jared can uh, Jared can go on the podium, and I'll uh, I'll I'll drive the pro light. <laughs> that that'd be that'd be classic right there. Yeah, for sure, for sure. But uh, going back to General Tire, man, I know uh, how was it this year? I mean, uh, you know, with, with the X3 coming in, I mean, this is a tire. Anybody that's been on General Tire, we knew it's coming. I mean, I. Um, you know, I, I've had the opportunity to kind of see them through the development process and things like that. And I've got a set on my, uh, um, an early set on one of my Polaris razors, you know, just, you know, just testing it and kind of giving a bit of feedback and stuff like that. But how was that for you? I mean, coming in, uh, because before the season, you really didn't have much experience with, uh, with the new X3, right? Coming in and right out of the box, man, you're winning races on this thing. Yeah. You know, that another, another funny thing is people turned down general too. Um, you know, we, uh, we got on general and, uh, you know, the same the same person turned him down again and um went for someone else so it's kind of cool i was uh, i was honestly the only truck on general this year in pro light and i think uh, one of the only trucks on build signs too so it was it was kind of cool just to turn heads you know show that uh make these brands um you know try to grow with these brands and try to be the main driver on that team so you know i'm, I'm pumped with the new x3 uh you know that's i feel like it's the best tire in the pro life field right now and and i feel like uh, that gave me a big advantage um no, not just the tires, but the grooving goes into it. Um, we have uh, Mo, he used to work at BFG. He, he does all our grooving on our tires, and I feel like, you know, he knows he has a ton of experience with that, and, you know, he uh, we got those tires to work, and, you know, I'm pumped with those. Yeah, it's funny you say that too because you know here you go. You know you said you know people weren't crazy about Bill Steen, and uh, now all of a sudden you know you're winning championships on those. General Tire's been around forever. I mean, legendary brand. Uh, you know, 101 years now at this point, and uh, you know here you go. You walk away from everybody in the field, take home a championship. I guarantee you, the phone's ringing over there at uh, General Tire. You know, hey, I, w- I want a sponsorship for next year. You know, and it's like. Oh, you know how it's just funny, you know, you go out and, you know, we all knew these tires were good and it's like people are all skittish and now, you know, a year later now the phones are going to be ringing off the hook, you know? Oh, yeah, for sure. It's it's for sure a tool to just, uh, you know, show people and and prove people wrong. You know, that's, that's kind of what I like doing, especially when there's doubt in something. So it's, it's cool that General Tire has stuck by me and, um, you know, time to bring it on the pro too. 
Yeah, for sure. I'm I'm pumped to see in a pro too. I think it's uh it's gonna be pretty exciting, man. Double duty next year. That's uh it's gonna be kinda cool. You worry worried about the the grind or uh, it shouldn't be too big of a deal. Yeah, the only thing I'm worried about is my endurance, dude. I uh, I hopped out of my pro life this weekend after it was like a hundred this weekend and I was beat. I mean you know, that's a lot it's a lot of work in there. I mean the pro light I'm I'm cramped up in there and it's hot in there, so you know, I think I just gotta work on my endurance a little bit and uh you know, that's a lot it's a lot to wheel in one weekend, so I mean, we're in for it. I'm in for it, my team's in for it, but um we're ready. I can't wait. Yeah, that is, that is a lot of laps to burn in one weekend, man. When you you know, and it's not just the races, it's everything before the races and uh, qualifying and uh, man, it's uh, it's uh, burning in a lot of laps. But I think you know it'll definitely make you faster. You know, you can uh, if you're having a bad weekend in one, you know, you've got extra laps. You know, just to kind of figure things out as far as the track goes. I think it. Uh, you know, anybody that's done it, you know, they they do it for a couple of years, and and I think you know it, it ends up the grind hurts them. But just being able for a year or two to burn that many laps uh, makes you so much better of a driver. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I saw RJ do it and. He, he, uh, I mean, our our main focus will still be on pro light, but I think we're just pretty much going to get our feet wet in the pro too, and you know, feel it out, see see kind of where we're based, and uh, you know, go hard, go hard at 2018 in the pro two. But um, you know, we're just going to get our feet wet this year or next year. Yeah. Well, I got to ask. I mean, the future for Jarrett Brooks. I mean, you're a, you, you're a young guy, and you know, and obviously off road, you're doing really, really well. I mean, uh, you're pretty happy racing off road. Uh, you know, or you have your sights set on uh, on anything outside of off road. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm in love with off road. I mean, you know, if I'm not racing my car, I want to be I'll drive my Razor. I want to be I want to be driving something all the time. So, you know, off road is probably the most fun thing I've ever done. You know, I mean. I've done uh, I've done some circle track stuff. I've done some go kart stuff, but you know it's hard to, it's hard to top uh, off road racing. You know it's just almost everything in one. You know you got jumps, uh, flat track, uh, you know big banking turns, and it's uh, there's so many factors in off road that that play a big key in everything else. So I mean um, you know I would love to get in like an arca car or something else. You know um, some of those stock car racing. I think. Uh, I think honestly, I drove those a few years ago, and that was honestly a big key for me that uh, helped me drive my off-road truck. Yeah, nice. Well, I think uh, definitely the the doors will be open, uh, especially after this year, for you to jump in and try a few other things. But uh, appreciate you taking the time, man. Congrats, and uh, we'll definitely have to catch up, you know, at the start of next year, and uh, you know, kind of see see where things are going. Yeah, man. Thank you, guys. Thank you for having me on the show. All right. Thanks a lot, Jared. I appreciate it, buddy. All right, see ya. See ya. All right, that was Jared Brooks, 2016 Pro Light champ, General Tire driver, doing it up on the brand new General Tire X3. Those are available now at your local tire dealer. I'm telling you, you won't be disappointed. Go out and get yourself a set of General Tire X3s. Game changer as far as off road tires go. We're going to take a short commercial break. We come back, we're going to have some Lucas Oil off road results coming at you. I'm Polaris rider Lee Valley Valley. And I choose Polaris just because they have the best quality, highest performing, most fun machines out there. Only one company has taken Levi Valley to 10 X Games medals, snowcross championships, a double backflip, and a world record long jump of 412 feet across the San Diego Harbor on New Year's Eve. And that company is Polaris. Whether it's dominating the X Games, racing a stock Polaris Razor XP1000 in the Terracross Championship, or just hitting the trail on the weekend, for over 20 years, Levi has relied on the same quality Polaris vehicles and products you can purchase at your local Polaris dealer. Take the advice of action sports legend Levi LaValle and visit Polaris on the web at Polaris.com to see the full lineup of Polaris vehicles or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. Honey, they're giving away $79,000 in guaranteed cash prizes for the crazy cash harvest at the Blue Water Resort and Casino. On Saturdays, swipe your club card to receive free grand prize drawing entries for the grand finale. One winner will win $25,000 on October 29th. Plus, on Saturdays, a chance to win $3,000 in cash prizes. Drawings every half hour from 2 to 6 p.m. Blue Water Resort and Casino. Right on the water. Right on the money. 
Hey, girls, grab your friends, bring your bachelorette party, even your mom, for a smoking hot night with the mates from Thunder from Down Under. That's right, ladies, direct from Vegas. It's the Outback Fantasy Tour with the guys performing live at the Blue Water Resort and Casino Saturday, December 3rd. Two showtimes at 6 and 9 p.m. Tickets on sale now for $25 at the Blue Water Gift Shop or online at bluewaterfun.com. Must be 21 or older. Blue Water Resort and Casino. MTX Audio is the leader in sound. Whether you're looking for high-quality all-weather motorsports audio products like sound bars, amplifiers, and speakers that will work on any UTV or motorcycle, need to dial in your car home with high-performance audio solutions, or are looking for a new portable speaker or set of headphones, MTX Audio has what you need to get your project sounding as good as it looks. MTX Audio is a family-owned American manufacturer who has been in business for over 40 years. Check out the full line of products at MTX.com. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, a 268 horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine, rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race ready 305 horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, it's not a sibling rivalry, it's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor General Tire Edition. Uh, Ashley Wilkie, Jarrett Brooks, a couple of... uh, Pretty fun guest there. I don't know. Maybe we'll see a ride swap there uh, at some point next year. Ashley's chomping at the bit to get behind the wheel of a pro light. Oh, uh, man, wouldn't that uh, wouldn't that be some fun? But uh, speaking of the weekend, uh, tons of uh, racing action uh, coming at us. But uh, Lucas all off-road. Obviously, Jarrett Brooks taking that, uh, that cup win for pro light. We had uh, R.J. Anderson taking uh, the cup win. Um, taking the cup win in the Pro 2, Pro 4 shootout, getting around R.J. Anderson with a couple laps to go to take home a $30,000 check. Uh, but uh, Pro Buggy, it was Darren Hardesty, Hardesty Jr. Uh, taking home the Pro Buggy win. Pro Light, round number 15. It was Brandon Arthur doing what he needed to do uh, to uh, to try and narrow that gap to the championship. But uh, you know what, Jarrett Brooks, when he finishes in second and he's got that big of a lead, uh, points don't uh, uh, don't get changed around too much. But i uh, got to give a shout-out to Ronnie Anderson uh, finishing up on the podium there uh, out there in Phoenix. And uh, Ronnie, you know, his kind of debut season in pro light. i got to tell you, I'm pretty uh, pumped on Ronnie. I know uh, I'm, I'm going to get him on air at some point, uh, maybe him and RJ both at the same time. But um, Ronnie just uh, – Man, he's coming into his own as an off-road driver. I think next year we're going to see Ronnie Anderson. You, you really, you know, this year he, kind of, he was kind of on the fringes, right? And I think next year is the year we really, he kind of has his breakthrough. So uh, it's kind of my predictions. But uh, Pro 2, round 15, R.J. Anderson taking the victory. Rob Mack, Carl Renazetter, your 1, 2, and 3. And then Pro 4, round number 15, Kyle Duke taking home the win. Uh, Renazetter and McCachron. Kyle Duke, Pro 4 champ on the year. Rob Mack, Pro 2 champ on the year. Jarrett Brooks, your Pro Light champ. Those are all your chance for Lucas Oil. Um, uh, big note uh, coming out of there, though. Sounds like Haley Deegan going to be making her Pro Light debut next year. So Pro Light, uh, man, it's going to be a stacked field. Uh, that's for sure. But uh, we're going to take a short commercial break here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Back after this. I'm Polaris rider Lee Valley Valley, and I choose Polaris just because they have the best quality, highest performing, most fun machines out there. Only one company has taken Levi Valley to 10 X Games medals, snowcross championships, a double backflip, and a world record long jump of 412 feet across the San Diego Harbor on New Year's Eve, and that company is Polaris. Whether it's dominating the X Games, racing a stock Polaris Razor XP1000 in the Terracross Championship, or just hitting the trail on the weekend, for over 20 years, Levi has relied on the same quality Polaris vehicles and products you can purchase at your local Polaris dealer. 
Take the advice of action sports legend Levi LaValle and visit Polaris on the web at Polaris.com to see the full lineup of Polaris vehicles or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Jim Beaver here, and uh, man, uh, fun show so far. Coming up in uh, this hour, we're going to have Lightning Larry Raglan on the show. Uh, got done with uh, Jarrett Brooks, Pro Light Champ, Ashley Wilkie, um, kind of a brand ambassador for General Tire, also works for Traxxas and Monster Energy. Um, but uh, good show so far, but uh, lots of racing action, man. We got a ton of results to get to in the next couple of segments, but uh, got to give a shout out to Stadium Super Trucks. They're down there for a triple header at the Gold Coast in, not the Gold Coast in Vegas. No, 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 no. We're talking Gold Coast down there in Australia. And uh, man, uh, Sheldon Creed taking two of the three victories. Uh, Robbie Gordon taking that other victory. Um, but uh, Sheldon Creed, P.J. Jones, Matt Brabham, uh, one, two, and three. Race number two was Robbie, Matt, and then Sean Richardson, and then uh, Sheldon, Matt, and uh, Toby Price. So T.P. Toby Price, I know I got to reach out to him. We got to get him back on air soon before Dakar. But uh, man, he's coming into his own as a four wheel guy. I can see Toby Price. You know, he's got the Dakar victory on a motorcycle. Like, I can see Toby make, being one of those guys that makes a transition over there to the four-wheel side of things. He's getting that good behind the wheel. He's running trophy trucks now, stadium super trucks. Dude can wheel, man. He can flat wheel. Kind of kind of cool. Uh, Toby, he's just a fun guy to be around and have on air. Like I, I, love, I get the most random text from Toby Price. It's, it's quite funny, actually. Um, but uh, this dude, like seriously, you watch next two to three years, Toby Price, bam, he's going to put his stamp on four-wheel motorsports. That's for sure. Um, look at him. He's just hovering right around things. But uh, got to give uh, – oh, man, Sarah Price, she was down there and uh, I guess really only got a chance to uh, to run one real race. One of them she was uh, taken out of um, by Paul Morris. I, I don't know. It just wasn't a good weekend for Sarah Price. But uh, Paul Morris, actually her driving instructor, uh, if you watch the video, um, he lost the brakes going down in a big stretch, and then there's a hard corner, right? Lost the brakes. Well, Price had her brakes, so uh, so Paul Morris um, knew it would be Dunzo, like Dunzo City for him if he if he didn't scrub speed before he hit the wall, right? So here's Sarah Price under braking. So so Paul Morris, being very smart, runs into Sarah Price, right? And uh, you know, and they're they're friends and teammates, but he runs into Sarah Price. And uh, and basically used her to scrub speed, and they both went into the wall. Uh, both of them walked away uninjured. The truck's damaged, but uh, um, it's an interesting video. And, uh, I mean, uh, very smart on Paul Morris. You hate to take another racer out, but, it, you know, it very well could have saved his life by running into her and using her to scrub his speed. So, I don't know, interesting video. It's up Stadium Super Trucks' uh, Facebook page, but... Uh, um, yeah, SST going down there in Australia. And uh, we're going to be back after this on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Hey, I'm RJ Anderson, factory Polaris driver, and I drive Polaris because it's the most capable, race-ready off-road vehicle on the market. When RJ Anderson wanted to set a world record for the longest UTV jump in history, not once but twice, what company did he trust? Polaris and their championship-winning Razor XP1000. RJ is a UTV champion behind the wheel of Polaris vehicles, and he exclusively trusts the Polaris Razors to bring him race wins and championships against some of the toughest off-road racers in the world. The same Polaris Razors RJ has won championships in, set world records in, and conquered the wall of death in XP1K2 are available to you at your local Polaris dealer. Take the advice of world record holder RJ Anderson and visit Polaris on the web at Polaris.com to see the full lineup of Polaris Razor vehicles or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. For 100 years, General Tire has provided tires for your lifestyle, your adventure, your anywhere. Born from competition, the Grabber Tire offers the durability and off-road traction you demand in a tire. We put these tires to the test in the harshest off-road racing conditions to give you a tire that will make your anywhere possible. So let us 
take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us photos at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible. Because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. Life is all about sound. The sound of sports. The sound of the racetrack. And the sound of your vehicle. Don't drive around listening to this. Drive around listening to the sound of performance. Gibson Performance. Gibson Performance Exhaust is the company who can turn this into this. Remember that life is all about sound, and Gibson Exhaust is the sound of performance. Check out your next catback exhaust system, headers, muffler, or UTV exhaust at GibsonPerformance.com and get more power and more sound. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for 15% discount the subaru wrx and wrx sti a 268 horsepower turbocharged subaru boxer engine rockets the wrx around corners and down straightaways a race ready 305 horsepower turbocharged subaru boxer engine keeps the wrx sti a rally legend the subaru wrx and wrx sti it's not a sibling rivalry it's a tag team Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show powered by Polaris Razor. And uh, speaking of Razors, Camp Razor this weekend, Glamis, I am amped, you should be too. Uh, only place where I think it's the only UTV manufacturer that I know of that would take a bunch of their latest models, in this case, 2017 XP turbos, line them up at Glamis, nonetheless, the sand dunes, right? You're just going to line them up. You can literally walk in, show them your driver's license, put on your helmet, and take a brand new Polaris Razor out on the dunes uh, for a big, for a long ride, you know, and, and I got to tell you, Polaris Razors arrive and drive stuff. Uh, you know, they they call them razor experiences second to none in the industry. It's not like they take you and it's like in an asphalt parking lot and you get to drive it up and around a couple of cones and come back. This is glamorous. Seriously. Glamorous. You know, and granted it's kind of a, a follow the leader type of thing. But, you know, they've got, uh, you know, they've got somebody who works for Polaris at the start and at the back, but and they've got like 80 of you in a line. But in between that, you can pretty much do whatever the heck you want. Like, seriously, get these things airborne. You're throwing them sideways. Like, they kind of encourage it, you know. It's like, you know, they want you to test one out and buy it. Like, I'm serious. If you, It's worth driving out to Glamis for the day just to get to drive these Razors in the Polaris Razor Arrive and Drive for free. Like, I, I've never – I, I went out there. This is before I was even signed to the Polaris brand. I went out there and was doing it. Like, seriously, it's worth it, man. And you know, they give you free swag. It's like Camp Razor, dude. It's so much fun. If you're look, looking for time to kill, um, I mean, you can just go around and check everything out and all the builds. You can do that. Like, I, I hate to say you can go to Glamis uh, for the day and not take uh, uh, UTV and still have fun. But with Camp Razor, you actually can it's uh it's kind of that that cool so uh just fair warning like the next week uh on my social media and on my shows like probably gonna be talking a lot about polaris razor and uh camp razor because uh it's going down i'm i'm telling you man go out there have some fun i put my stamp of approval on it. i'll be out there friday for sure and uh, i'll be wheeling uh some of the new uh 2017 xp turbos pumped about that absolutely pumped about that um but this past weekend, man, we've got so much motorsports to talk about. Uh, got to talk about Red Bull Straight Rhythm. Um, this one of those events, I loved it when it was tied in with the Off-Road Expo, not formally, but it kind of was, same time at the same venue. It was uh, really cool. That was year number one when, like, Pastrana came out of nowhere and uh, and ran uh, ran his uh, 
what was it? Uh, it was a it was a 500 cc two stroke, right? Um, he came out and and did it up, and uh, you know, but straight rhythm is kind of fun. It's you know, there's the open class, and then there's you know the the lights class, I guess they call it or whatever whatever they call it. But uh, open class, you can run two strokes, four strokes. They don't care. You can do whatever you want. So it makes it kind of fun. Most of these guys just run their supercross bikes, but uh, guys like Pastrana, when he did it, thought out of the box a bit. Um, but anyways, you know, this is kind of kind of fun. No turns, just straight as an arrow and all about scrubbing and getting your rhythm. And, you know, and don't get me wrong, you know, I'm not saying, uh, you know, the best guy always wins. But uh, the guy that was on point that day definitely does out here. And uh, uh, Marvin Muskeen um, taking away the victory from Ryan Dungey in the final. And uh, Marvin, man, guy was on point, undefeated all weekend long. So the way this is works is, is you know, they, there's uh, – Best two out of three, right? So you each each head to head, you get three attempts because you know there's two lanes, so you know they flip flop, and then best best two out of three. So everybody's got a shot at both lanes at least once, right? And uh, so Marvin was so fast, so good that he never went to a third. He never went to a third uh, head to head. It was always he always swept the first two every single time. And then going up against Dungey, man, you'd think at least Dungey get one. Nope, Marvin that good. Uh, yeah, it was Marvin's day, uh, that's for sure. Marvin taking, uh, taking, um, you know, basically taking uh, the victory, and uh, good for him, man. Definitely on point. Stoked to see him. That's some momentum heading into Supercross season. Uh, you know, kick the year off. Yeah, we're only literally like two months from Supercross. Crazy to think that, right? Um, and then the lights. Um, some interesting news out of lights. Anybody knows about Uncle Ronnie Mack? Uh, Ronnie Mack on uh, Uncle Ronnie on uh, Instagram, man, just a personality, right? Uh, he showed up out there, um, and I don't know. He's just he's all about the fun and games, right? He showed out there. He he didn't win, but uh, um, uh, <laughs> uh, I will say that Ronnie Mack did uh, did. Uh, I don't know. He, he put on a show. You, you just got to know Ronnie Mack. If you don't follow him on Instagram, it's worth the follow. The guy's just nuts. Anyways, the big news coming out of lights, though. Josh Hill took the la- the gate on an Alta Mo- Motors Redshift MX bike. Uh, it was an electric motorcycle. First time one's ever lined up for a professional motorcycle race, right? Um Man, it, and it actually uh, – he actually won a run on it against uh, – um, uh, against Kyle Cunningham. Um, so I, I don't know, man, electric motorcycle taking a victory. I mean, I'm not saying like, uh, I'm not saying that all of a sudden you're going to see electric bikes next year take over, but let, let's think back here to uh, motocross and supercross. I've been a fan for a long time. Right. And, uh, man, it's, uh, um, you know, there was a time when the four fifties, I can't remember who debuted the first four fifty, but, uh, you know, when the first four fifty debuted, everybody was laughing, you know, and he was kind of running behind. Right. And, uh, it was a Yamaha. I can't, I can't think of the writer's name. Wish Amy was here. She'd know right off the top of her head. Right. Um, but way back when, um, it was, uh, it was a big deal. It was laugh, you know, ran around. He ended up taking like a top five and it was a big deal. Right. It was always oh, a heavy bike. It was never going to work for supercross or motocross. <laughs> right. And, uh, now we go, where, where are the two strokes? Two strokes? Ah, man, those things are antiques. They're all relics. They're relics, you know. You know, and, and you got some two-stroke diehards. Anybody that rides a two-stroke loves them, right? You know, eh, it's fun to get out two-stroke. I, I prefer four-strokes because I'm lazy. I don't want to mix my gas, and they're too temperamental. Four-strokes, you generally just kick it over and go. Two-strokes, uh, I don't know. Anybody that's owned a Yamaha Banshee knows what I'm talking about. That thing was the most temperamental ATV I ever owned. Thing uh, spent more time working on it than I actually did riding it, I think. When you rode it, it was a blast, but... Uh, uh, yeah, it was not exactly, uh, I don't know. Um, but anyways, uh, I'm just, what, what I'm going back to here is, is, uh, you know, electric bikes, everybody laughs like, you know, he, he, he didn't make a fool out of himself. Right. But, um, I, I, the only thing I can say here is, is don't count those out 10, five years from now, it might, might be five, five to 10 years from now, we could look back. And uh, and Supercross could be all electric bikes. You just don't know. Remember the four strokes were the electric bike of their day, and everybody's laughing and poking poking fun at them. And now, you know, two strokes are you know those things are uh, you know they're tough to find. So uh, I'm just saying that uh, before you count the electric bikes out, as that technology progresses and things like that, like it, it could uh, 
could be the future 10 years out of uh, of Supercross and Motocross. We know it. You just never know. And uh that's kind of uh it's kind of the that's kind of the interesting thing. You just never ever know, um, you know, where technology is going to lead. I mean, the auto industry has been that way. You know, technology is everybody laughed at and things like that. Electric cars, stuff like ah, look where we're at now. You know, people spending six figures on stupid electric cars. You know, I'm still a gas guy. You know, <laughs> but I'm just saying, like you, you don't know. So I, I could see this. This could be the turning point here. Like it, literally, you know, that that seed has been embedded in people's heads. Oh, an electric bike can do this. It can do this. So how do how do we proceed here? You know, it, it, you, but that the seed has been planted. Now we'll see how it grows. You know, it's going to take a while to see how that seed grows. Um, five to ten years is my guess. But I'm just telling you, it's been planted, and I think you're going to see them start trickling in a little bit more and and things like that as uh, as time progresses in in events and things like that. You know, I know there's rules and regulations and stuff like that, but uh, we're we're just going to see. Have to have to play by ear. But uh, this is one we'll have to table and. Uh, talk with uh, Amy when she gets back on the show because I'm sure she's going to want to weigh in on this for sure. But uh, we are going to take a short commercial break here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show powered by Polaris Razor. And uh, we come back, the legend, Lightning Larry Raglan, is going to be calling into the show. And I got to tell you, I'm pretty excited uh, about this interview. So uh, that coming at you here uh, when we come back from the break on the Down and Dirty Radio Show powered by Polaris Razor. I'm Polaris rider Jim Beaver. I race trophy trucks professionally, host the Down and Dirty Radio Show, and also travel the country announcing motorsports events. I've seen it all, and trust me, I've done most of it. So when it comes time to relax on the weekend, nothing is better than taking time with my family in our Razor vehicles. They've got the reliability I need to just pick up and go explore the desert dunes or trail and have the capability to attack even the harshest terrain. If you're looking for some of the most reliable and safest and hands-down most capable off-road machines in the world, look no further than Polaris and their award-winning lineup of Razor vehicles. Whether you want your daughter to experience off-road driving for the first time in a Razor 170 like me, take the entire family out in a Razor XP4 1000 on the weekend, or shred the desert and dunes in the all-new Razor XP1000 Fox Edition, Polaris has you handled. Take my advice and join me and some of the best drivers in the world by driving a Polaris Razor. Check out the full Polaris Razor lineup at Polaris.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris. Polaris Razor. Honey, they're giving away $79,000 in guaranteed cash prizes for the crazy cash harvest at the Blue Water Resort and Casino. On Saturdays, swipe your club card to receive free grand prize drawing entries for the grand finale. One winner will win $25,000 on October 29th. Plus, on Saturdays, a chance to win $3,000 in cash prizes. Drawings every half hour from 2 to 6 p.m. Blue Water Resort and Casino. Right on the water. Right on the mud. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for 15% discount. Since 1970, Casey Highlights has been designing and manufacturing performance lighting for off-road and motorsports. Beginning with the legendary Daylighter up until today's revolutionary Flex, Pod, and Pro 6 lighting systems, Casey Highlights offers a full line of halogen, HID, and LED lighting solutions for your off-road vehicle. Looking for the best quality lighting? Looking for the brand champions choose? You're looking for KC Highlights. Find out more information at kchighlights.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at KC highlights the subaru wrx and wrx sti a 268 horsepower turbocharged subaru boxer engine rockets the wrx around corners and down straightaways a race ready 305 horsepower turbocharged subaru boxer engine keeps the wrx sti a rally legend the subaru wrx and wrx sti it's not a sibling rivalry it's a tag team Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally.
Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Uh, Jim Beaver here, waiting on uh, the legend, Lightning Larry Raglan, to uh, call into the show. And uh, that's right, uh, Off-Road Motorsports Hall of Fame inductee, Lightning Larry Raglan. Sometimes i got to wonder, man, why, why did it take so long? Like, this guy's legend, but... Uh, um, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I guess he's still racing too, you know, racing UTVs with Chad and, they, you know, his son Chad. And that, that's one I can't wait to get in and ask him, you know, because uh, I've heard all these stories about why he got involved and why he's, uh, you know, racing UTVs and things like that. But uh, I got to tell you, that's uh, it's pretty uh, pretty cool to see him um, see him out there and, uh, you know, running UTVs and, and uh, you know, see, still staying active in, uh, you know, in the sport. And, uh you know, and, and, you know, that's, that's about a big endorsement. We've talked about UTV racing a lot on this show, but, uh, it's a massive endorsement to, uh, the UTV racing community for a legend. Um, you know, I think five time winner of the Baja 1000, uh, who knows how many championships and race wins he's had. Um, but it's an endorsement to the UTV community for somebody like Larry Raglan, to uh, basically put their stamp on it and and say, hey, this is where I'm going racing. I mean, here's a guy, you know, he he, you know, obviously he, he's got trophy trucks at his disposal. He's still got you know Arnold, and then I think he's still got the the Vortec Trailblazer, Chevrolet Vortec Trailblazer. Now, obviously, you probably don't want to go and run that, but uh, um, you know, anyways, if if he put his name out there, you would have people lined up at the door to get him to team with him in trophy truck. You know, it, it's just just he's that guy, right? Um, so, uh, you know, for him to, to be able to still race at a high level and, uh, you know, he's not going trophy truck racing. He's not going 6,100 trophy truck light racing, not going class one racing or anything else. Like he's choosing to go and, and run a Polaris razor in best in the desert. I mean, to me, that is, uh, it's pretty amazing, really. It's uh, it truly is amazing because he could uh, um, he could pretty much be racing anything. But uh, looks like we got Larry calling into the show right now. Um, how is everything going, Larry? Welcome to the show. Hello. How are you? I am doing good, my friend. Uh, uh, first off, I mean, I got a lot to talk to you about today. But uh, congrats on uh, you know on the uh, you know on the I guess the upcoming induction into the Off Road Motorsports Hall of Fame. Well deserved, my friend. Thank you. Um, I'm yeah. excited about it. Yeah, it's one of those things I was just saying before you called in. I'm thinking back, you know, and I remember, you know, you racing against Dad in Class 8 way back when and all these race victories, and I'm going, it's kind of one of those things, like you see the name pop up, and I think everybody just assumed you were already in the Hall of Fame. You know, and I, I hate to say that, but I think all of a sudden I went, wow, Larry's not in there? Like, well, yeah, this was a long time coming, you know? Well, I, I think they kind of wait for you to uh, quit racing, uh, for one, and I don't know, I hadn't, you know, I hadn't thought too much about it until it all happened, and I thought, boy, this is, it's a lot, uh, it's pretty exciting, it, it's just, a, it's really quite an honor, and it's gonna, it's a very special thing to me, uh, the more I'm involved in it, the the more I appreciate it, and then um, it's brought back lots of memories for myself, I look back and it where I started, and, and not even thinking that something like this. That's why I never even, I didn't even have a thought that I'd be in the Hall of Fame. I never, I never looked at it that way. I didn't ever think of myself really as a race driver. I thought of myself as just out there doing it because I really like to do it. It's just fun. And that's always how I approached it. And I didn't approach it as though it was a career or something, my livelihood or whatever. It, it wasn't. I did it only because it was fun. Yeah. Well, and I think, you know, a lot of guys that approach it that way, um, you know, I, I, I think a lot of them like you, uh, you, the success comes because you're not, you're doing it for fun. I mean, you're not looking at it as a job or an occupation, you know, you're going out there and you're having fun. And generally when you're having fun, the success comes, you know, you're not putting that overbearing pressure on yourself and, uh, you know, you're doing something you're enjoying. So it makes it easier to go and, and, you know, perform at a high level. No, I think you're exactly right. I think that's the psychology of it is that if you can do it, like the world is not going to come to an end if I don't win a race. As long as if I had a good time doing it and I was competitive, then we had a good day. I, I didn't have to win. Even though I drove for General Motors and on Monday morning, you'd have to give them a little report 
as to what happened, why did you, did you not win? But they were always very understanding, and there was never pressure saying, you know, if you don't win the next race or one of the next three races or something, we're going to find somebody else. They never did that. It was always uh, very understanding, and and it was always a, very enjoyable for me to do. Yeah. Well, and you were you really were involved in off road at such a special time. I mean, uh, you know, you mentioned about General Motors, but that was when you know, and and we'll get to talking about modern you know off road racing. Not that you know. Uh, I guess current day off road racing, but you were there. I mean, it was General Motors and Ford and and Toyota. I mean, it, it was full factory backed manufacturer involvement, and uh, you know we haven't seen that in quite some time. I mean, it had to have been really special to be a part of off road during that era. You know, when when it really was the manufacturers, uh, you know, going out there and and competing against each other. No, it was when you look back now that it was the best. I mean, we we didn't know that that's. The first time that General Motors called me, you know, I almost said no. I'm not. I'm not interested. I was, you know, I was racing Class One and racing for the overall, and they were going to build a Class Seven. And I go, oh no, I don't want to race a Class Seven. <laughs> but then they said, hey, we're this is a this is our stepping stone. We want to go. Uh, we want to eventually build a vehicle that can compete for the overall. They said we're new to the sport. We want to learn about it, and this is what we're going to do. And so. And they more or less they did, they gave me the word. They said, "Hey, we, we are going to build enough as well. As long as I get a chance to drive that vehicle, uh, then that's I'll I'll put my time in Class Seven. And as it worked out, I really enjoyed Class Seven. I mean, I got to race against Roger Mears, Manny Esquera, and we had great races. It wasn't a big class, but it was very competitive. We had Nissan, Ford, and Chevy. So it was those three manufacturers." But as time went on, I just uh, it evolved into into uh, more and more things for me to do, and and it was a very wise decision. I was just very fortunate that that General Motors called that time, and and I elected to do it. At that time, they really it wasn't that big. That's just when manufacturers were really starting to get into it, and it was it was a special time. Uh, it was it was fun. It was really fun. Yeah, well, and going back to the beginning, I mean, uh, you know, everybody's got a story of how they first got introduced into off-road racing. I mean, it, what's Larry Ragland's story? How did you get bit by the bug way back when? Um, it got, I mean, first of all, I have always been a desert person. I mean, I was raised in Phoenix here, but I had a little homemade sand buggy uh, when I was just got out and built it during high school, actually. But we used to go explore the desert out here and, and go places. And, and I've always liked that. And then the first thing that I ever could afford was a dirt bike. So I started racing just the local little races here, no big deal, but doing, uh, racing dirt bikes, desert racing, little hundred mile races and stuff. But then a a friend of mine, he, uh, he came to me and a really good motorcycle rider. And he said, Hey Larry, I just raced an off road car. Uh, I think it was the Mint that he had just come back from. He, he said, that was so much fun. He said, we need to get a car. And I was starting to become successful in my business. I said, all right, sign me up. So he ordered the car, the motor, the new Funko and the whole thing and showed up. And that was it. We, we loaded the, we got the car a few days before the Baja 500 in 1980, I think it was. But loaded that car up, went to the Baja 500. And that was it. I mean, that once I got in that car down there, <laughs> I, 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 I had discovered, for me personally, the ultimate sport. I thought, you know, nothing can be more fun or exciting than this. And that was it. My life changed. You know, it just became a major part of my life from that point on. And that's my love affair with off-road racing started that very first race. There was, there was nothing about the sport that I didn't like. Yeah, well, and I, I think uh, you know it, it's wow. I mean, it, you know, and it's funny because it seems like anybody you get them out there, and it's it's the same story. You know, off road it just gets its hooks in you, and it doesn't let you go. You know, um, but you know, how, how did that? I mean, how, how did that whole transition work? I mean, obviously you started winning races, and and you know, you talked about uh, General Motors, you know, giving you that call. You went to Class Seven, and then uh, you know, and then up came uh, what Class Eight, and then uh, and then obviously we went to Trophy Truck behind that. But you know, how was that first transition into you know going from the mini truck to to the larger trucks? 
Uh, the, I think my biggest transition was going from class one, going to the class seven. I mean, you'd, you'd been in a single seat Funko, you know, a, a lightweight car, rear engine, uh, you know, and you're used to r- driving by yourself. Then all of a sudden they give you a vehicle that, which was much heavier, um, not near as agile, very tippy, everything and you have two people now you got to be responsible for that guy and that that was a big big transition i didn't really enjoy having somebody else with me uh, i liked doing my own thing but then as time goes on uh you get very used to that but going from the seven to the eight was not not a big deal it just it just was a much more comfortable truck john nelson built that that was like a a Cadillac. I mean, it was just, a, <laughs> and it had lots of horsepower. So it was a completely different, but really the, the transition wasn't, it just, I, I didn't notice at all hardly, but I did go in from a buggy to a truck. That that was the big one. Yeah. Hey, Larry, we got to take a short commercial break. Can, uh, can I put you on hold for a second and about three minutes we'll no. pick you back up? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no problem. All right. No problem. I'll, All right. I'll be right there. All right. I'm going to put you on hold for a second. We're going to take a short break, and uh, we'll be back here with uh, Lightning Larry Raglan here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Hey, I'm RJ Anderson, factory Polaris driver, and I drive Polaris because it's the most capable race-ready off-road vehicle on the market. When R.J. Anderson wanted to set a world record for the longest UTV jump in history, not once but twice, what company did he trust? Polaris and their championship-winning Razor XP1000. R.J. is a UTV champion behind the wheel of Polaris vehicles, and he exclusively trusts the Polaris Razors to bring him race wins and championships against some of the toughest off-road racers in the world. The same Polaris Razors RJ has won championships in, set world records in, and conquered the wall of death in XP1K2 are available to you at your local Polaris dealer. Take the advice of world record holder RJ Anderson and visit Polaris on the web at Polaris.com to see the full lineup of Polaris Razor vehicles or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI. A 268-horsepower, turbocharged Subaru Boxer engine rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race-ready, 305-horsepower, turbocharged Subaru Boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, it's not a sibling rivalry. It's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com rally. Since 1970, Casey Highlights has been designing and manufacturing performance lighting for off-road and motorsports. Beginning with the legendary Daylighter, up until today's revolutionary Flex, Pod, and Pro 6 lighting systems, Casey Highlights offers a full line of halogen, HID, and LED lighting solutions for your off-road vehicle. Looking for the best quality lighting? Looking for the brand champions choose? You're looking for KC Highlights. Find out more information at kchighlights.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Casey Highlights. MTX Audio is the leader in sound. Whether you're looking for high-quality all-weather motorsports audio products like sound bars, amplifiers, and speakers that will work on any UTV or motorcycle, need to dial in your car home with high-performance audio solutions, or are looking for a new portable speaker or set of headphones, MTX Audio has what you need to get your project sounding as good as it looks. MTX Audio is a family-owned American manufacturer who has been in business for over 40 years. Check out the full line of products at MTX.com. Life is all about sound, the sound of sports, the sound of the racetrack, and the sound of your vehicle. Don't drive around listening to this. Drive around listening to the sound of performance. Gibson Performance. Gibson Performance Exhaust is the company who can turn this into this. Remember that life is all about sound, and Gibson Exhaust is the sound of performance. Check out your next catback exhaust system, headers, muffler, or UTV exhaust at GibsonPerformance.com and get more power and more sound. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Jim Beaver here, and uh, my guest on the line, my special guest, uh, Lightning Larry Raglan, Off-Road Motorsports Hall of Fame inductee. Uh, 
going into the Hall of Fame next week. We were uh, just kind of talking a little bit of uh, Class 8 racing. And, uh, Larry, I know, uh, you know, you'd mentioned the transition to Class 8 was uh, was a lot of fun for you, uh, you know, the trucks, uh, the technology there. I mean, when you jumped into Class 8, I mean, that was uh, at the point in time where Class 8 was kind of the, the trophy truck of, of that era. Yeah, when we first started, it, it wasn't exactly. I mean, Robbie had come along, and I think he – I think like in 89, he won the thousand in a truck. Um, but he, he was, the, and he really kind of gave the, the class more credibility and more people started to get into it and saw that up until then, they didn't really see them as truck as vehicles that could race to the overall. But then we got in there and then I'm, we had Rob McCracken in the Ford. We had myself in the Chevy. We had Walker in the Dodge. And Class 8 became a really good class. I mean, and, but we would fight so hard in that class trying to win Class 8 that all of a sudden, every once in a while, we'd work our way all through all the way through the Class 2s and Class 1s and, and then end up winning overalls every once in a while. Uh, and so it started evolving pretty quickly then. And that's when the trucks just start getting better and better. And the next thing you know, they go, the manufacturers, I think they wanted to have more, uh, have more of a say so in it. And the next thing you know, they said, Hey, we're just going to make a truck class, unlimited truck class. And it's going to be called trophy truck. And so by, I think 94, I think they're all running there. You know, that, that was created. And then we ran class eight for a year uh, with a class eight truck and trophy truck because some of the other people had already had them built. But it evolved pretty quickly then. And it wasn't like they were that much different, but they weren't restricted by the rules in Class 8 where they could be more creative, you know, on the chassis. And, you know, in Class 8, you had to retain that stock frame, and they had to work around that. So it, it made it easier. And I don't know that they – and you could run larger tires because they could do more with it. Yeah. Well, and I know, shoot, just thinking back when, you know, I, I remember this is back when they used to do impounds and, uh, you know, in Class 8 and stuff like that. I mean, I remember your Class 8 truck and uh, and walking by and, and looking at that thing. And I think, it, you know, and I, I you know, I, I grew up watching off-road when my dad was racing. This is the er- the era before GPS and, and all this other stuff. But for some odd reason, I remember looking in your truck, and yours was the first one I ever saw that I think you had like a TerraTrip rally computer in your Class 8 truck or something like that. And I think it was like the first time I'd ever seen something like that in any off-road truck and i remember looking at that like what what the heck is this in larry's truck you know no i had the terror trip from the very first class seven truck i had i and actually my team was managed by clive smith which was from new zealand and he was a uh, rally driver and so my very first race in class seven so this is back in 86 uh, he would fly a, a, a navigator out from Detroit and he'd come out and go mark the course. And in those days, everything was done on terror trip. And then he'd fly out for race day. It was a, a navigator. It used to be with, um, Buffum, John Buffum. Oh, wow. Okay. It was his navigator. Yeah. So I had a, a, a official navigator from the very beginning. And so he'd get in there and have all these hundreds of notes they're used to doing navigation for you know for a 12 mile stretch or something and now we throw 500 miles at him <laughs> and he'd have a notebook a mile thick but it didn't work for me but the concept was good because they just they just over overdid the notes but the concept was good and that's what it evolved into so i'd had a terror trip from the very beginning once i had a, a nav- once i had a passenger then i had a uh, terror trip yeah well, and then you moved into uh, into uh, class, uh, well, into trophy truck, and uh, you know, obviously, we've got the iconic Arnold now, and uh, I know, I you know, I know you guys still have that truck, right? I know you used to come out and bring it to Parker um, once in a while. Yeah, nope. As always, I'm sitting here staring at it right now. <laughs> I'm out in my shop, and I still have it. Uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful truck. I mean, I have a love affair with that truck, also. I mean, I you know, I'll never part with it. Yep. Uh, I mean, we, we did a lot of miles together and it was just a, 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 it was a great vehicle. I treated it nice and it treated me nice. I mean, it won, what was it? Four out of five Ba 1000s 
and only missed out on the one in five straight by just uh, I screwed up and I even beat us by a few minutes. He had finished, um, I don't know, seven Baja 1000s in a row, I think. Wow. It was just a great, great truck, and we, we got along well together. Yeah. Well, then it, take us to uh, the, the Vortec Trailblazer program, because that was kind of uh... – Kind of GM's formal end to uh, you know their their involvement in off road, but not just GM's. There was a, quite a few manufacturers that was kind of the last hurrah. But uh, you know how did how did that program come about? Because was, you had this truck, you know, that you won all these Baja one thousands in that was still very competitive. You know how how did things evolve into the Trail Trailblazer project? The way the way it came about was Arnold was still plenty capable of. Uh, winning the 2000, that race. But the marketing department at General Motors, the brand manager for the name Vortec, and they were coming out with the new Trailblazer and the Envoy for GMC, and it was going to have an inline six-cylinder engine in it, and they wanted to showcase that engine. And that, and, and we could not make the six-cylinder fit in Arnold. And that was the problem. So he said, all right, we'll, we'll design a new truck, and the new truck was the exact same physical dimensions of Arnold. Same concept, mid-engine everything, except it was designed with a six-cylinder engine in it. And that was, that was the reason it came about. And, and, uh, and, but it only happened for that one year. It was just a one. We, raced, we got to race uh, 99 and 2000 with the Vortec name on there. Yeah. But that was the reason it, it came about, was to, was to showcase a six-cylinder engine. Well, and, and, you know, and, and kind of those trucks, and it seemed like right there was kind of the turning point, you know, you, you, where things really turned into, uh, you know, kind of where we're at today. And, uh, I mean, what, you know, obviously you're a guy who, you know, I think could be still very much go out and win, uh, you know, score best in the desert races, you know, and compete for overall victories. I mean, what, what, how do you see the current state of trophy truck? I mean, there's a lot of money being poured into the sport, but it's not necessarily manufacturer involvement. I mean, you know, what, what is your take on the current, uh, current state of, of trophy truck racing and, and off-road? Well, I, you know, first of all, I, I don't think I'd be capable whatsoever of going out and winning an overall anymore. That that ship has already sailed. <laughs> I'm much too old, and, and I'm not. I just couldn't even come close. The trucks they run much faster now, but to me, the the technology is still pretty much the same, more sophisticated. I think the the bigger the bigger difference is probably durability, and the trucks. In the old days, were, were, we, they were fast also, but we had to manage them more because they were not as durable. So we, we could only run them hard if we had to for, for a limited amount of time. I mean, we couldn't abuse them. Now these guys, they, they're so rugged. I mean, they, they're the ring and pinions, the trannies, everything about them is stronger. And so they, they can run them harder all day long. And we, we could never do that. When we got in to go 1,000 miles, we had to really, we had to manage the vehicle for that whole thing. It's not that we didn't run them fast, but we couldn't abuse them, and we had to have have some discipline to make sure it got there. Where they're different now, they, they, it's. Uh, but the manufacturers, uh, it was a shame to see them go away. I think the people now they probably spend just as much as, as the manufacturers are spending. Uh, it's a shame because you you really almost, you have to have money to go trophy truck racing. You you, you can't rely on sponsors. You at least you have to have a lot of money to get there to where a sponsor would give you something. So it's not easy. Yeah. Well, and, and, you know, here we are to the current. You're still out there competing. Uh, you know, you uh, got a great, uh, you know, relationship with Polaris Razor. You're out there competing in UTVs. I mean, and that's uh, just in the past two years we've seen, you know, the sport of UTV racing in the desert just skyrocket, you know. And, and how, how has that been? I know you guys have uh, – you built the one car, and now you've got uh, the one UTV, and now you've got a new Polaris Razor being built, correct? Yep. We have a brand-new turbo being built, and it's, we were hoping that it was going to be ready for the 1,000 but it's not going to make it. So uh, I'll probably still be racing uh, a Polaris Razor in the 1,000. It won't be the, the new car, but we'll still be there. No, I, I can't get away from it. I do my best. Uh, you know, I, I, it's just as part of my life. You know, off-road racing is something I love. I, I just 
I, I don't know. I, I, I can't get away from it. <laughs> Here I am. I'm going to be going down there again. I'm not going to be racing a trophy truck by any means, but the Polaris Razors have opened up a whole new um, uh, a venue for me. I mean, I, I, I've had more fun in my Razor in the last two years than you can possibly imagine. Just a few days ago, my wife, we just came back from doing a thousand mile trip. We went down to Loretto and back in the Razor. It's probably the fourth time this year we've been to Baja with it. I was in Colorado with it this summer. I go to Moab. But it's it's just I have more fun in the desert now than I've ever had because of the Razor because it's so functional and convenient, and I can take my wife with me, and we can go sightseeing, exploring, and they're still racing. You still get the same thrill. You don't carry the speed, which is good for me. But it's, it's I, I love them. Yeah. Well, I know, you know, my dad, we about, it was about a year ago, I think. And he, you know, and he hadn't really been in a modern razor. And I, I, you know, Polaris sent me a new turbo and I immediately said, dad, let's go out in the desert. You know, we went to a section, you know, uh, in, uh, you know, out by the Jeep trail. And I said, Hey, let's, uh, I said, why don't you drive this? And he went through there and he goes, my goodness. Like he just shook his head. He's like, I can't believe what I'm doing for $25,000. He's like, we're going just as fast as I did back in the eighties. And he's like, man, he's like, this is, he was just, mine was blown out. Impressive. It was and bang for the buck and how much fun you could go out and have in one, you know? No, it's, it's been it's been eye-opening for me because I, I didn't give them much credit until I actually drove one and then it just changed my whole outlook on it and I've been firmly committed ever since. I mean, it's just... Uh, to me, fun per dollar, it's pretty hard to beat. Yeah, well, it's got to be pretty fun for you being able to race with Chad as well. Oh, no, it keeps me involved with Chad. I mean, he's now in... in that's his... His uh, career is, is, you know, and is, is part of his business and is UTV oriented, and so we still get to go to the desert. We get to do lots of neat little fun trips. Um, for Polaris or with Mad Media, we get to go out and play. I've had it, it's been, as a matter of fact, it's almost more it takes more time now than racing did. <laughs> but ha- having fun is a lot of work. It's not easy. <laughs> you know? I, I tell everybody, you know, working was easy. You know, the, uh, the fun is what really requires a lot of work. I look forward to going back to work so I could rest. <laughs> well, I think that circles back to the beginning of the interview when you said, you know, you, you off-road was always about fun for you. And, uh, you know, and uh, you know, it looks like you're still having fun out in the desert, that's for sure. No, I'm still having a great time out in the desert. It's still – it's. A long time ago, I had someone ask me, do you think the sport's making you old or keeping you young? And at that time, I go, well, you know what? I, I, well, I guess we'll have to wait and see. Well, I'm almost 74 years old, and I'm still doing it and still enjoy it. So hopefully hopefully, it's keeping me young. Nice. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to call in, Larry. And uh, once again, congratulations on uh, you know the Off-Road Motorsports Hall of Fame induction. Well-deserved and uh uh, looking forward to seeing you, uh, you know, race that new Razor. Okay, have a good day, Jim. Thank you. All right, thanks a lot, Larry. All right, bye. bye. All right, that was uh, off-road legend Lightning Larry Raglan. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I think, Larry, I-, I could probably talk for days with him. Um, just uh, an amazing, amazing guy and uh, one of uh, the greatest of all times, and I say that uh, – uh, no disrespect to any other off-road driver, but uh, uh, you put him up there, and I, I would say Larry Raglan, Ivan Stewart, um, and, uh, you know, Rob McCachron, you know, Walker Evans. I mean, you know, I, I look at, uh, you know, Manny Ascara. You know, there's different classes and things like that, but there's about five or six guys that you could say greatest of all time. And, Larry, you know, I can't say you, in off-road you can say they're single greatest ever, but there's five or six that are renowned as, hey, these dudes are, are the guys, the Mount Rushmore of off-road, right? And uh, Larry's definitely name is in that equation. So uh, honored to get in, you know, be able to do that interview with Larry. Uh, we got to take a short commercial break. We got come back. We're going to wrap things up here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. I'm Polaris rider Lee Valley Valley. And I choose Polaris just because they have the best quality, highest performing, most fun machines out there. Only one company has taken Levi Valley to 10 X Games medals, snowcross championships, a double backflip, and a world record long jump of 412 feet across the San Diego Harbor on New Year's Eve. And that company is Polaris. Whether it's dominating the X Games, racing a stock Polaris Razor XP1000 in the Terracross Championship, 
are just hitting the trail on the weekend. For over 20 years, Levi has relied on the same quality Polaris vehicles and products you can purchase at your local Polaris dealer. Take the advice of action sports legend Levi LaValle and visit Polaris on the web at Polaris.com to see the full lineup of Polaris vehicles or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, a 268-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine, rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race-ready 305-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, it's not a sibling rivalry, it's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. Life is all about sound. The sound of sports. The sound of the racetrack. And the sound of your vehicle. Don't drive around listening to this. Drive around listening to the sound of performance. Gibson Performance. Gibson Performance Exhaust is the company who can turn this into this. Remember that life is all about sound, and Gibson Exhaust is the sound of performance. Check out your next catback exhaust system, headers, muffler, or UTV exhaust at GibsonPerformance.com and get more power and more sound. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for a 15% discount. For 100 years, General Tire has provided tires for your lifestyle, your adventure, your anywhere. Born from competition, the Grabber Tire offers the durability and off-road traction you demand in a tire. We put these tires to the test in the harshest off-road racing conditions to give you a tire that will make your anywhere possible. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us photos at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible. Because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor and uh, General Tire Special Edition today. Big thanks to my guests, uh, Jarrett Brooks, Ashley Wilkie, and, uh, you know, especially Lightning Larry Raglan, absolute legend. Uh, so much fun having uh, him on the show for sure. Um, Man, uh, lots coming up. Obviously, Camp Razor this weekend. Make your way out there. Uh, you definitely want to, uh, if you're in the area, don't miss out on Camp Razor. I'm just telling you, do it. Uh, you, won't be, you won't be disappointed. SEMA show coming up. Um, uh, Lucas obviously getting capped off. We've got a couple of rounds of Enduro Cross left. Um, man, Baja 1000 on tap. Um, Got to give a shout out to uh, some of our weekend winners we didn't get to. Randy Romo with a couple of wins in uh, works. David Hagsma, uh, Ray Bullock, Bo Barron, Katie V uh, with wins. Uh, big shout out to Amanda Sorensen on her championship uh, in works. Um, Enduro Cross winners, we had Cody Webb and Shelby Turner. Shelby, five out of six wins in a row. Uh, big wins for her. And um, Rick uh, Waterbury and uh, Gary Fervante Fer- Fer- Sr. Um, with uh, wins in Ultra 4. Um, I think that about caps up our weekend events. Uh, use that code uh, at dirtfish.com, JB Dirtfish, for 15% off your class order, or at mtx.com. It's uh, just my last no- name, Beaver. Uh, that'll get you. Uh, That'll get you a discount there as well. Big shout out to Polaris Razor, General Tire, Subaru, Casey Highlights, Gibson, uh, Dirtfish, MTX, Impact, Terracross, Blue Water Resort, and Casino. Give me a follow at Jim Beaver 15 on Instagram and Twitter. My partner, Crime Amy Hood, is at Amy Hood 71 on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, we're both available on Facebook, uh, downanddirtyshow.com. For those back episodes, download our app, rate, review, subscribe, Project Action. Please do it. And uh, please listen in. Great guests coming up uh, each and every week on that show as well. If you're listening here, you need to be listening there. And, uh, man, hope you guys all have a great week. Uh, We will be out at Camp Razor. Come by, say hey. And we'll see you next week here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Game on. 